Fitness. Hello and welcome to our new series, Luxury of Poverty, Winning Against All Odds. I'm your host, A.B. Ravi. Well, everybody loves a winner. I think that's given. This new series is about showcasing winners. Winners from the world of business. Again, there is one big difference to the winners who will be featured on this show over the next six weeks. None of the winners were born with a silver spoon, nor had a godfather. Most of them were born into poverty and faced many disadvantages at every stage in their life. But they overcame those disadvantages with their brilliant ideas, confidence, ambition and passion. And these were the qualities that helped them achieve their goal. In essence, the new series features entrepreneurs who have made it big by fighting odds at every stage of the entrepreneurial journey. In fact, my guest, Dr. A. Velumani, founder of Thyrocare, fits into that mold. He is a classic rack to riches story. Dr. Velumani came to the city of Mumbai with 500 rupees in his pocket. Today, his net worth is over 2,000 crore rupees. Dr. Velumani represents hope. He is a living example that one lifetime is good enough to achieve a lot. So, over the next six weeks, Dr. Velumani will be with me in this studio trying to decode the success mantra of entrepreneurs featured in this series. With this thought of mine, let me turn my focus to the hero of this week's episode, GSK Velu, the man who built Privitron Healthcare. This company is India's largest medical technology company in the healthcare equipment space. Velu's life could make for a good script for a Bollywood movie. His larger-than-life story is marked by some dramatic make-or-break moments. Take a look at Velu's story. It will inspire you to start your own business. To Helen Back is the story of GSK Velu, the man who founded the Trivitron Healthcare Group of Companies. Thanks to Velu's intense healthcare focus, in two decades, Trivitron has emerged as the largest integrated medical technology company. With an army of 1,500 employees spread over 25 offices and 8 manufacturing plants located in Chennai, Mumbai and Pune in India and at Helinski in Finland, the company offers a unique 360 degree solution in laboratory medicine, imaging ultrasound machines, critical and cardiac care, operating rooms and ophthalmology along with providing expert consulting services. This success has been possible because of one man's steadfast belief that he can do it. The founder of Trivitron, GSK Velu, was born into a lower middle class family in a small village in South Tamil Nadu. His recollections of his childhood days include walking to school 10 kilometers every day. Despite scoring 97.5% marks in qualifying subjects, he failed to get into a medical school in 1984 due to the reservation system. So he opted for the next best option. He graduated in B Pharma from BITS Pilani in 1988 and landed a job with IMI, a firm distributing medical equipment. Within a few years of working at IMI, his employer offered him a partnership in the group firm Allied Healthcare in 1990. But things did not go as planned. So he went back to working as a regional head with Chiron Diagnostics in 1992. This job gave him international exposure and a good understanding of the medical equipment industry. This exposure and grounding made him even more confident about starting his own venture, which he eventually did with the setting up of Trivitron with a partner in the year 1997. But three years later, he ran into a problem with his joint venture partner and it temporarily brought Trivitron to a halt. But Venu was no quitter. He scouted for new opportunities and relaunched Trivitron by roping in a relatively unknown international brand. Soon he made his mark. His rise to the top in two decades is not only because of his novel strategies but also key partnerships which he managed to forge. One such crucial partnership was forged with the industry veteran Dr. Pratap C. Reddy, 
who invited Baylor to be a partner for Apollo White Dental Clinics and Apollo Dialysis Clinics in 2011. Trivitron's multi-pronged strategy of leveraging local innovations, embracing frugal engineering, partnering with MNCs and managing strategic acquisitions have yielded rich dividends. The company's turnover has grown more than threefold from 200 crore rupees in 2010 to 650 crore rupees in 2016, while its operating profit has shot up almost fivefold from 16 crore rupees to 78 crore rupees during the same period. Today, Trivitron is a force to reckon with in the medical technology space. I was just earning 2,000 rupees salary in 1988. Mm. So for me, the failure really didn't uh, uh, bother me at all. I had a passion and I just went after my passion. And with the passion, you combine it with hard work and dedication, someday you will succeed. That is the philosophy in which I took all my ventures. Always our my journey over the past almost three decades has been up and down, even in my childhood to uh, today what we are doing. But always I believe that, you know, if you put, uh, if you go after your passion, you will, you will succeed at some point of time. Okay, Dr. Wellin, welcome to the show. What's your first take looking at the Trivetron story on GSK Velu? I liked the school, the like the village, Okay, I like the kilometers of walking he had had. I think that gave him the fundamentals of taking life head on. Once you know how difficult it is, life can be, mm. then the rest all becomes relatively simple. This uh, gentleman uh, had a high risk appetite and he left his uh, home and went to Pilani to do his uh, engineering. Yeah. In those days uh, it's rare that says that he wanted to risk. I think he then joined uh, a couple of uh, organizations where all were medical and his yeah. dream all was medical. Yeah. And not only just being in a medical, he is having an interest in risking, in manufacturing, in trading, in providing services also. I have been monitoring him for the last uh, 25 years. In fact, in between he was my competitor also. Okay. And I must tell you he was very tough when tough he was on the competition side. Okay. Now he is not as a competitor. But if you look at it... So he is a collaborator with you? A he is... Partner, uh, we can call him as my vendor. Okay. Uh, he is also doing plenty of other medical businesses. In fact, what is common between me and him was the background of village. Same village? Uh, similar village. Okay. And But if you see the difference, I focused on an own area and he is restless. And he thinks he can make machines, he can make reagents, he can uh, go for joint ventures. I think recently he has acquired a company in uh, uh, Europe and he is very... Uh, so basically a man full of energy. energy. Okay. And also he is fairly young. So I believe that what gave him the power is the poverty. Okay. That's where probably uh, I relate many first generation entrepreneurs with that uh, background. Background. Okay. And then first uh, uh, first generation entrepreneurs have nothing to lose. If you listen to him, he said, "I was drawing a two thousand rupees salary, so I will have nothing much to lose." So the That's downside the is there's no downside. Absolutely. Okay. And then he ventures, no one succeeds uh, overnight. First few have to be failures. And once failed, if you have got discouraged, you are gone. Okay. I don't think winners truly lose. They lose, but then they don't lose their heart. They don't lose their heart. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Velo's life seemed to be like a roller coaster ride. But what comes out loud and clear is that he was determined to achieve his goal. On that note, we need to take a short break. When we come back, we will find out how a man with no money or business background dreamed of becoming an entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Welcome back. GSK Willis' first brush with entrepreneurship was Allied Healthcare. But things were not shaping up as he wanted. So he picked up a job with Kiron Diagnostic at Regional Head in 1992. 
This job gave Velu international experience as he worked out of China. Let's find out what Velu has to say. While I was a uh, you know the director in Allied Healthcare, so ultimately I found you know even though the company was growing, I was not getting my share. So I had to get into a corporate job in 1992. Uh, became a country manager for Siva Conning, which ultimately became Chiron Diagnostics in 94. Uh, so in until 92 to 97, I I really travelled across the world, particularly in South Southeast Asia, and spent a lot of time in China in China. So uh, my entrepreneurship experience for three years and five years of multinational experience. Experience uh, gave me the confidence uh, to start Trivitron in 1997. So, Dr. Velumani, from employee to employer, to employee to employer is the story of GSK Velu. He kept working only in the healthcare sector. Do you think this is what helped him to be ahead of the curve? I think what helped him to be ahead of the curve were all the so called unfortunate things which became finally fortunate. Because you know, mishaps, you in life, you become fortunate, then end of the story. Okay. In fact, I also recall my, uh, I did, for, unfortunately didn't get job in Coimbatore. Unfortunately, I didn't get a job in a good company. And the company which I got, unfortunately got closed. So you can call it as all unfortunate. But actually all were fortunate. So when you look at where Trivitran is today, if you look at he did not get success, he did not get good partner, he did not get a happiness in working under someone, that all says that they were all fortunately a good turning points for him. And today if he is successful, it is because at some point of time he felt that I know what is business, how things are done let me invest in my own and he invested on his own and uh, almost uh, it's the same year I started a business he also had started same time? yeah similar time 1995 but you have grown by leaps and bounds I, I think both of us have grown uh, he in his space me in my space and I believe there is a lot of learning for him from his uh, childhood from his school, college days and initial working days all have become his fundamental core knowledge for him to drive his business on add to that is his knowledge of international uh, exposure which probably helped him to risk uh, in dollar risk in dollar we just saw how Trivitron Healthcare came into being but in 1999 value had a major setback with his JV partner this brought Trivitron story to a grinding halt so how did you overcome the hurdle this is what value has to say take a look See, 97 when I floated the company, uh, my uh, the company which with whom I was associated for 10 years, either as an employee, for first as a distributor employee, then own employee, they were fully dependent on me to do the business in India. And that's how those, um, you know, the, they, uh, they offered me to start a joint venture here and we floated a company called Chiron Diagnostics. But before this Chiron Diagnostics came to existence in operation, this Chiron Diagnostics was acquired by Bayer. So then I had a joy, choice at that time in 1999, either I became the head of the combined company or I continue with my entrepreneurship journey. But since I already had to give up my entrepreneurship journey in 1992, so I didn't want to give up at that time. So I thought I'll go ahead independent of the fact I have to start all over again in 1999. I said I will leave the uh, Bayer distribution but start uh, Trivitron journey on its own. So the, really the Trivitron journey started from 1999 to be independent of what I have been doing for the first 10 years. Dr. Velumani, Velu's business came to a grinding halt for no fault of his. How do you factor such uncertainties in business, in such situations? What are the practical options before the entrepreneur? Do we need to have a plan B? I think having plan B is not easy all the time. But being prepared is the best uh, solution. Now, if you look at it, he was doing a business in a partnership with a JV. Yeah. Now, that is getting acquired by some other big brand. That means it was not at all dreamt of. Yeah. Now, then he has an option, either a secured job yeah. of heading that business in the country or a prosperity route where he can get into and do his own things. I think that was very crucial for him at that so how, stage. How do you take the judgmental call? Oh, there are only two kinds of people. Okay. One who underestimate the risk and okay. get into trouble. Okay. Other one 
who overestimate the risk and don't get into prosperity. And the third one is an entrepreneur. Okay. So I have a reason to believe he knew it. May not be that easy. I think uh, he did it. Uh, uh, of course, he has struggled a lot. Do you I think he was a born entrepreneur? He is a born risk monger. Risk monger. Very well put. Well, the story of this self-made entrepreneur is indeed interesting. On that note, we need to take a short commercial break. When we come back, we'll take a look at how Trivitron transformed itself from a distribution company to become one of the largest medical technology companies in India. Stay tuned. Welcome back. I believe that the biggest turning point for Trivitron was a transition from a distribution company to becoming a full-fledged R&D driven manufacturing company. So from 1999 to 2009, we were pretty well predominantly a distribution company. And we had a dream run between 1999 to 2007 by lose, not even losing a single distribution agency. We had large distribution uh, contracts or uh, rights with companies like Boston Scientific, Fresenius, Hamilton, Nihon Kodan, uh, Herbe, Hamilton, many big multinational companies. But all of them, because the Indian economy opened, the healthcare medical device segment was growing, they all came direct. So in 2007-8, we had to think through a different strategy. We just can't be a large distribution house anymore. And if we have to survive, we have to become our own innovator and a manufacturer. So that forced me and my management team to sit together and change the entire charter of the company, being uh, a distribution company to become a own innovator and manufacturer. So we started planning from 19, uh, 2008, and by 2010, we put our first factory. And in the past six years, we have now grown from being just uh, one factory to nine factories in five cities in three countries and became a full-fledged innovator and manufacturer with some uh, global reputation. Slightly different, this company. Most Indian companies do not invest in R&D. Now, here's the SME player who is invested in R&D. Do you think this is what sets value apart? Necessity is the mother of invention. Okay. He got first disturbed by Bayer getting acquiring his company yeah. and then he took a distribution of Bayer's competition and that company was acquired by another company. So literally speaking, any distribution business you have, you are under a mercy of somebody's survival. So probably at that stage he felt that and by that time he got enough experience of handling uh, market, people, problems and he felt that let us do an R&D. But to your question, in India, medical R&D, especially clinically, clinically yeah. you know, pharmaceutical Pharma. R&D keeps going on. But if you look at but the laboratory side, research. if you look at the diagnostic side, hardly any R&D. But I think he knew this would work in the long run. I think he was pretty in to start his entrepreneurial journey. So he sees that, uh, you know, in 40s what I should do, in 50s what I should do. And he has put up his things in, uh, uh, in an order. But if you ask me, it's all evolution. No one can plan much in advance what they can do. And once you learn something, you have something more to then look at and then keep moving ahead. So basically it's like a moving goalpost, so you have to be prepared for Absolutely. that. Absolutely, and the times are changing, market is changing, competition is changing, you yourself is cha are changing. And then your funds positions are becoming better because nowadays you find plenty of people with funds. So I think being an entrepreneur in years before 2000, that certainly needed courage. And I'm sure uh, it was because of his uh, risk-taking ability that he could uh, see that much early. Now, he's targeting $1 billion over the next 4-5 years. Probably he'll achieve it. But when you look at the whole story of GSK, Willow and Trivitron, what is that about this company that appeals to you, very singularly, that strikes you? I think the leadership uh, always is very important. Uh, companies are never made without leadership. Okay. So, if you look at me, his ability in taking risks in manufacturing, marketing, distributing, as well as services provision. So he has a wide spectrum of knowledge, young enough, and he is a powerful entrepreneur. More than anything else, medical, 
Okay. In medical, I don't think anybody loses. Okay. Either somebody makes too little money or they make too much of money. So, in fact, I keep nowadays telling wherever I go, do invest in healthcare. That's an industry which is going to be for next 100 years going to grow with a double digit CAGR. Okay, going by a GSK value story, what is one or two things a budding entrepreneur can emulate to apply in his business? Take risk is the first one because the entrepreneurial journey itself is taking risk. Okay. Number two is uh, must have knowledge to uh, do a business. You shouldn't start it too early. I think Velu also was an employee for 10 years. Okay. I think when he started his business, probably he was 28 or 29. Quite and young. then uh, 7, 8 years of exposure is very important. I think any man who wants to do business should have 5, 10 years of exposure. By the time he, is he will understand what market is, what product is, what brand is, what HR is, what IT is, what logistics is, and then he will be able to do business. Be early, but don't be in haste. One should know that it's not everybody's cup of tea. To do business successfully, what you need is an idea, a stamina, and a frugality to take it ahead. Very well put, Dr. Velumani. What impresses me most about GSK Velu is his grit, determination and passion. He knew where he wanted to go and how he wanted to go. This tenacity of purpose is what made GSK Velu successful in his business. On that note, it is time to say goodbye. See you next week with another interesting episode. Till then, keep watching CNBC TV 18.